with her. Uh, Stan, Steve Blair is downstairs. He'd like to speak with you. Would you? Who? Well, you remember the young American? Fiber optic data link systems. All oh, right. Uh, what do you want? Oh, nothing special. He's just passing through. Well, I can't see him now. One thing that isn't causing our problem is fiber optics. Well, that is true. You wouldn't want to see him, would you, Mary? He's a fiber optics specialist. Oh, but I'd love to. You would? Yes. Well, he could certainly uh, give you a brief outline on the subject. All right. Would you mind seeing him alone? I want to check those drawings we were looking at yesterday. In your office, okay? What? Yeah. I'll just be down in the hall, Mary. Won't be long. Hello, Mary Edwards. Oh, I haven't seen Stan for four years. I was over here telling them about fiber optic systems. Made quite a difference in my career, that trip. All thanks to Stan, really. Oh? Well, maybe he told you about it. No, no, he didn't. Oh, really? <laughs> well, that was my big break. It all started in California. You want to see me, Jan? Yeah. Sit down. Our European partners are planning a space mission. Space mission? A production unit on a satellite to manufacture a vaccine. Hey, great. They're thinking of using a fiber optic data link. Uh-huh. You find all the details here. Make out a proposal for them. Sure, right away. And Steve, show them that we know a bit about high technology, too, okay? You bet. Still on the payroll? Hey, Nance, he wants me to propose a data link for a space mission. You don't say. Hey, come on. It's my big break. If I can sell our fiber optic system for that job, even he might manage a smile. That would make a nice change. What, him smiling? You getting the contract. <laughs> hey, Nance! Hey, listen to this. <clears throat> Among the many plus factors, advantage-wise, to be derived from a fiber optic system, we may list the following. Too wordy? How about fiber optic systems have the following advantages or the following plus factors? Fiber optics, the plus factors. Then list them. It's good. I like it. Thanks, Nance. I owe you one. Well, I could put off that dinner date with Robert Redford tonight. Uh, sorry, Nance. I'm working late tonight and tomorrow and the next night. So, Robert Redford gets lucky. One, an optical transmission line can accommodate a high density of traffic. Nah, it's too vague. I want to give him figures. A single optical transmission line can carry as many as 12,000 messages simultaneously. Hey, I like it. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, Wilhelm. Have you read this? Most of it. What do you make of it? Plenty about fiber optics. Not much about what it can do for us. A single optical circuit can carry 12,000 messages simultaneously. Uh, how many do we have to carry? More like 120. What does this mean? Attenuation is less than one decibel per kilometer. Attenuation is the fall off in the strength of the signal. Oh, per kilometer? Our signals don't have to travel more than one meter. So forget about attenuation. Anyway, everything that used to be sent over a wire is now being sent by fiber optics. Yes, but what can it do for us? Maybe we should ask Mr. Blair. This uh, telex came from the States this morning. By fiber optics? I don't know. Blair says he'll be glad to come over here and explain it to us. Their expense or ours? Theirs, I think. Oh, well. In that case, let's hear what he's got to say. So you want to go to Frankfurt? Well, there's nothing like personal contact with a customer, Jan. 
That's what you always told me. I'm also telling you that this is an expensive trip, so make sure it's not wasted. It won't be. Trust me. The manufacture of optical glass fiber begins with the deposit of several layers of oxides from a gas mixture on the inside of a heated silica glass tube, which is then drawn out to form a glass rod. The doping must be very precise to ensure low loss transmission of the light. The glass rod is gradually stretched until its diameter is reduced 100 times or more. When this process is complete, the fiber core is only one-tenth of a millimeter thick and over one kilometer in length. A protective coating is applied to prevent damage to the surface. The glass has good tensile and bending properties, but because of its very small diameter, it is further embedded in plastic tube. For the transmission of data by fiber optic cable, the transmitter first converts electrical signals into light signals. At the receiving end, the light signals are then converted back into electrical signals with very little loss of power. Here, optical cable is being laid along a 15 kilometer route between two telephone exchanges. In built-up areas, the cable is installed in ducts yeah, okay. 1,000 meter lengths, which is then joined using special techniques. You do understand that we're not particularly interested in how you lay 15 kilometers under a highway. We're not into that kind of application. Oh, yeah, sure, I understand. What we do want to know, Mr. Blair, is what system you propose for a production unit approximately two meters high and less than one and a half meters in diameter. Oh, yes, of course. I'll be glad to present my ideas to you. Right now? Uh, well, it'll take a few hours to prepare. Uh, how about tomorrow morning? Fine. Uh, 10.30, mice in laboratories? 10. Great. We'll be there. So, I would suggest the use of compact and lightweight equipment, such as this transmitter and receiver, but combined in a single unit. <clears throat> um, one of these LW units, as they're called, is needed for each subscriber. That is, each point where you have data input and output. Well, take an electric motor, for instance. You need input commands to control the speed of the motor and output data from the tachometer to check the speed is correct. Well, now this is a multiplexer, which makes it possible to communicate with several subscribers through a single fiber optic loop. Now, what happens, in effect, is that the multiplexer calls up each subscriber in turn to receive or transmit data in digital form. All this happens so rapidly, in microseconds, that all the data appears to be exchanged simultaneously. I, I hope I made that clear. I understand about multiplexing. What I want to know is what you mean by compact and lightweight. What are the actual dimensions? Oh, uh actual dimensions. Well, each LW is, um, is 3 centimeters by 11 centimeters by 17 centimeters and weighs, with the housing, just over half a kilo. And you say you need one of these for every sensor? Yeah. Oh. Mr. Blair. Uh, call me Steve. <laughs> okay. Steve. Look, um... I think your system is too elaborate for what we need. Oh, too elaborate? Yeah. Okay, no problem. I can make it simpler. Much simpler. No problem. No problem. You mean a, another lecture? Oh, no, no. I can show you the actual equipment in operation. Tomorrow morning? Yeah, okay. Tomorrow morning. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm truly grateful to you for helping me out like this, Frederick. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, we need the connection for the motor speed control. The connection? Never mind, I'll get it. Hey, that's it. Now, what I've set up for you here are two fiber optic transmission lines. Now, one carries input commands to the electric motor and the other, output from the tachometer. 
Of course, this could be used for any kind of sensor or any kind of motor. Right, we understand that. Now, how about all those multiplexers you were talking about? <laughs> well, with this, you don't need them. You said you wanted something simple. Well, this is it. Hey, hey, hey. You're getting warmer, Steve. Okay, now, I'll switch on the data links. Right. And you can see how it works. There. Now it's operating. It's operating? Yeah. I don't see any light. Well, you can't see it. The wavelength we use is in infrared, outside human vision. Oh, we, we can use visual light just to make it look pretty, but <laughs> that's not for real. We don't want it to look pretty. Please carry on. Okay, uh, I'll switch on the motor and you can see how it works. See? Now, faster. And slower. See? It works. Yeah. And all you need is an LED to convert electrical signal into light at one end, and a receiver to turn the signal back to electric current at the other end. As small as that? Yep. Mm. And can we use the same setup for each transmission? Yeah. But with equipment this small, does it matter how many you need? <laughs> no, I guess not. All the same, I don't see why we shouldn't use just plain old electrical connections. Well, I'll tell you why not. No way can light signals be affected, like electric signals, by outside interference, such as cosmic radiation. Nor can there be any disturbance from electromagnetic interference inside the unit, such as your electrophesis current. Nor can there be any interference from one part of a circuit by another. Crosstalk, as we call it. Does that make sense? It sure does, Steve. Yeah. You've given us a lot to think about. So that's why Stan and Willem said that it couldn't be the fiber optics causing the problem. What? That's what they said. Can't be the fiber optics. Well, no, there's no way it could be. Not after what happened. Yes, right. Thursday, 2.15. Yes, I'll tell him. Right, thanks for calling. Bye-bye. J.M. wants to see me. Do you know why? Sure, I know why. Well? You better go in. He's waiting for you. Good luck. Morning, Jeb. Sit down, Steve. The guys in Frankfurt turned you down. They say a fiber optic system is an unnecessary refinement. The risk of interference in internal transmission lines is minimal. I thought they liked it. I did everything I could. I showed them how it worked. Matthew speaking. Stan Markowski here. Dr. Markowski, hello. Did you get my message? Yep, I got your telex this morning. Yeah, Mr. Matthews, we were very impressed with your system. I guess Steve will be disappointed. You could say that. I'd like you to know that he did an excellent job presenting his case. I'm glad to hear that. Steve is one of our most promising young men. The fact is, we've got a good product, and we usually have no trouble selling it. I just wanted to find out how he'd make out when the going got tough. Tell him he did just fine. You want to congratulate him? Sure. I'll pass that along. Goodbye, Dr. Markowski. Thank you for calling. Goodbye, Mr. Matthews. You mean that, J.M.? Don't you have some work to do? Oh, uh, yeah, sure, sure. So that's why I wanted to see Stan, just to say thanks. Not many people would have gone to that much trouble just for somebody that tried to sell him something. No, maybe not. I suppose that's what he meant when he said it wasn't fiber optics causing the problem. The he and Mr. Schroeder decided to use old-fashioned electric circuits. Didn't they tell you? Not in so many words, no. Well, Steve, if something went wrong with their old-fashioned circuits after all your efforts to sell them a modern system, it'll serve them right. <laughs>